Hi, I'm Amberly. Welcome back to Real Florida Magazine. Today is your opportunity to find out more about our local area. Welcome back here in Mariana, Florida on a beautiful Saturday right now for the 10th annual Paint and Pork. Uh, here now with Jerry Thompson. Uh, Jerry's one of the vendors out here. So far, we have not gone hungry, and we have not gone uh, gone un under. Uh, we have not gone without entertainment. Certainly, uh, great people watching out here, if nothing yes. else. Jerry, right now uh, we're at your booth, and uh, you've got homemade knives. Um, when I say homemade, it makes it sound like more of a, um, a hobby, but it looks like you're pretty serious about it. I know for a fact that it takes many hours to do what you do out here. First of all, thanks for taking the time to uh, carve out to, to speak to us today. Yes, sir. Thank you for asking me. Is this the first uh, pain and pork festival that you've been a vendor at? It is, yes. And you're here with homemade knives. Uh, you mentioned, and I guess I should know that it was one of your first uh, events because you said you just started this within the last year or so? I just started just a few months ago, actually. Uh, my pastor gave me the first spike, and uh, I had seen uh, guys make them on uh, YouTube and other uh, video channels, and I just said I was going to give it a try, and uh, he ended up with my first knife. It's pretty amazing stuff. Now, you've got knives here that have been made from all kinds of different uh, sources of steel. Uh, I'm going to reach over here right now, and I'm going to grab one of these uh, railroad spike uh, knives. I'm going to let you hold on to that. Uh, tell me what we're looking at right there now. Now, this is uh, it's a high-carbon railroad spike. Uh, it starts out just in a rusty, uh, raw form, and I put it in a forge. I get it hot and I start hammering it out. Uh, I let uh, I really let the steel tell me exactly the shape it wants to be, and uh, as I go, the knife evolves and uh, it takes about anywhere from six to ten hours from the time I first heat it till the time that I finish it, and that's just hands-on six to ten hours. Now, Michelangelo said that uh, every statue that he ever uh, produced uh, from marble was there. He just had to remove those pieces which were not part of that statue. <laughs> so it sounds like your philosophy is similar. You're letting the yeah. steel tell you what you should be doing. Exactly. I've never seen, and I, actually I was unaware that the, the steel in a railroad spike was of a quality that would uh, produce a knife, but obviously that's the case. It is. Uh, a lot of the first knives uh, used by in cutlery were high carbon steel. And the railroad spikes, especially the older railroad spikes, are very high carbon steel. Uh, they, they will rust. I mean, uh, it's just like any good uh, uh, cutlery, uh, it'll rust, but uh, it will sharpen and hold an edge uh, of a long time. Now, in addition to the railroad spikes, obviously you're making uh, knives out of other materials here. You just mentioned that you had a skill saw uh, blade that, that you used as part of one of your knives. What are the other uh, things that may come into play when you start making your knives? Well, I have a, a nephew and he has a friend that, that does uh, portable uh, lumber sawing business and they use a bandsaw and it's a very large bandsaw. And uh, I, he gave me a bunch of old blades and uh, I use it for fillet knives, it's uh, high spring steel and it's a high carbon also. And uh, it, uh, they work uh, very well, they hold an edge and uh, they were, the price was right for me. <laughs> well, this is a very rewarding um, hobby. Not only do you get to possibly make a few dollars, uh, but more importantly, you get to um, be artistic, and yet you're, you're providing a function, and you're probably providing somebody with a tool that they're going to cherish and actually use for yes, many years to come. Yes, sir. What got you interested in uh, making knives? Well, I've always liked knives. I've always, since I was a young boy, and uh, my son is the same way. Uh, I just always been fascinated with knives, pocket knives. Uh, I don't make any folding knives. I just make uh, uh, the uh, straight knives, the solid blade. Uh, but I, the, the knives are getting harder and harder to find a good quality knife. And the knives that I make, uh, especially the steel, the spike knives, can be passed on from, from generation to generation. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that really impresses me. First of all, these uh, railroad spikes are, are old to begin with. Yes, sir. Um, and then you're taking something which typically would be um, either used as a paperweight on somebody's desk or thrown away. Right. Uh, or rust to, rust to nothing. 
and uh, making it uh, a, literally a piece of art. Um, we're uh, panning the knives now, and as our viewers can see, um, you've got not only some beautiful steel that you're using, but also um, the handles that go into the knives. Now, are you also the uh, the manufacturer of these handles? Yes, I am. Yes. So you're woodworking and metalworking. Yes, sir. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the uh, handles that we're seeing here now. Well, the the natural wood handles I make. Uh, it's a, there's a leopard wood, and then there's a tiger maple. And uh, the synthetic uh, uh, handles are made from, uh, it's called micarta. And I use uh, either fabric dipped in uh, uh, fiberglass resin or I use paper. And uh, it, it doesn't matter really what you use, you put that fiberglass on it or in it and it becomes virtually indestructible. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much what I do. I make anything I use, I, make, I try to make myself. Well, and I hope we're not cutting into any of your sales here. We've got a few people coming by right now, and uh, we're going to get out of your way. But thanks again for taking the time to, to speak with us today. Yes, sir. Um, I'm fascinated. I would really like to uh, find out some more information about you, maybe do a little uh, uh, article in our magazine about what you're doing, and maybe follow your progress over time. Great. Uh, I think that that would be really good. I think our viewers and readers would really like that, too. Thank you. Uh, so, Jerry, thanks for, uh, very much for taking the time. Today. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're watching Real Florida Magazine here in beautiful Mariana, Florida, today at the 10th Annual Pig and Pork. Here now with Jerry, uh, looking at some of these gorgeous handmade knives. Uh, all the steel is worked by Jerry, and the woodwork that goes into the uh, the handles also done completely by Jerry. Uh, if you're, you're not going to be able to get an opportunity to see the festival this year, because if you're watching this, we're already gone. Make, mark your calendars for next year. I believe it's done at about the same time in April each year. Uh, the next year will be the 11th annual Paint and Pork Festival. Hopefully, we'll see you here. You're watching Real Florida Magazine, and we will be right back.